Did you know there's more than one type of UV resin and it really makes the job so much better to use the correct UV resin for the correct job. So we've got four different types here. We've got the classic, we've got the new formula UV resin, we've also got the low viscosity resin and then we've got the high viscosity. They all cure to an 80D hardness and they all cure within two to five minutes. I'm going to quickly show you how to use each one. So I'm going to show you what the difference is between the high viscosity, which is this one, and the low viscosity and the classic in the depth of the dome. Now what I'm going to do is draw a little line here. Fill this bit up here. Look how lovely and thick that is. It really does make a difference. I have gone over to using this as my doming resin permanently now because it works so well. All you have to do with this one, the high viscosity one, is fill it in. Don't want to work too fast because you don't want to get too many bubbles. And then what I'll do is I'll add a bit more into it. And you can add quite a lot because, as I said, it is very high viscosity. And this is on this old heart that I made a long time ago showing how you can get some beautiful patterns with normal resin colours as opposed to having to use alcohol inks. Although I've found alcohol inks now that I really like. Pop in any bubbles now that have gone on the top of that. I will pop in a little bit more of this high viscosity resin. And then the next thing to do... It's just cure it up and it will cure up lovely. Pop it under my lamp and then leave that to cure for about two to three minutes. Well, that's lovely and cured. So what I'm going to do now is use the classic and show you the difference. Now, I will say the classic is really good. I love the classic for making jewellery. I probably wouldn't use the thicker one to make normal jewellery with, although there's no reason why you can't. I would keep that specifically for for doming and I dome a lot of pieces so now that's on there and the reason we can't overload that any more than that is because it's thinner what will happen is it will just run over the sides so let's now dome that as well and then we can compare the two so let's have a look at the two now you can see the difference if I put it like that you can see the difference the slow flowing high viscosity one is quite a few couple of mil higher than the other one. I mean, they both give really good results. Look at them. But look at that beautiful dome on there. You really can see the difference. So, ideal for doming. But that doesn't mean your classic is no longer of any use because it's the classic one I would certainly use for making jewellery because you can still make some beautiful jewellery in and it's a great price. So we can do a few layers like that. We can stick a few wonderful sequins in. So this still really does have its home and its place. I will link these in the description below because they are brilliant. Once I found them, I use them so often. And then once we've got that how we want it, we can just cure it up as normal. Take about two to three minutes to cure that up. And once that first layer is cured, if we want to, you can put a backing on this. And believe it or not, I'm going to do this with some black glitter. All I've done is put my black glitter into a little jug, squeeze some of that UV resin out, mix that all around in there, and this is the classic one, and then I'm going to pour that over the top of what's already cured. All the way around, making sure I get around my little loop as well. Cover the whole base. And the easiest way to get any of the glitter out of there is just cure that up as well in there <laughs> and put that under your light at the same time and it'll just peel out. I always pop the bubbles that have come up because you always get a few bubbles in it once you've added glitter and then give that a cure. So that's with the classic. So let's take a look at this one. This should be all lovely and cured up now and it is. Look at that. <laughs> look how much fun that is. It gives a lot of sparkle in there and it's gone very very hard i do like that glitter on the back as well that gives it that extra little bit of depth so that's the classic and now i want to show you why the low viscosity one is really useful now if ever you've had a piece of resin like this where you've had to do some sanding or you've got a dull mould and you want to make it shiny but you can't be bothered to go through all the polishing grits for it, then this is where this low viscosity resin will come into its own. 
It is brilliant for this. So let's take some and paint that on. And just an old brush here, softish brush. You don't want too heavy a brush. Now, like I said, you can make jewelry with this as well. And I'm gonna show you that in a second. So I'm gonna leave that now to settle out. I'm going to pop off any bubbles that have come up on it. Because when you brush it, obviously you are introducing a few bubbles to it. And because we're working in an area here where there is no natural light, it's absolutely fine to be leaving that for a few minutes for them to come up. Now the other way is, if you've got a really intricate mould, which I have here, and I've already painted it inside with some mica powder, and you want it to get into all those little intricate pieces, then this is where the low viscosity resin is brilliant because it flows really easily and it will get into all those lovely little nooks and crannies and give you a great result. There we are, there's enough in that. Just pull apart these edges. There we go, so that's all nicely poured and all we need to do is cure this up and then I can cure up the block as well and I'll show you what that looks like. So this is now all cured, so let's have a look at this. Oh, look how beautiful that has come out. It has picked up all those little details and those little spikes that are going around the edges as well, which are the petals. And it has also picked up that lovely mica powder and made it look really, really pretty. And the top of this has come out beautiful. In fact, it's shinier now than the rest of it all the way round. And I think that has got rid of every single one of those scratches and it's covered it without giving it any dome whatsoever because we don't want a dome on it because we don't want one side of it domed. So let's now go to the final one which we haven't looked at yet which is the new formula. Now I've taken my mask off. I don't normally work without a mask because as you know I can be sensitive to resin but I want to see how well this smells and how clear it is. Don't forget this one does get slightly quicker than the rest. It isn't too thick which is great ideal for jewellery and this could be your standalone resin but we will have the purists out there that we'll want to have the classic and the classic is still readily available knock off some of those bubbles and what i'm going to drop in here is a little bit of nail art and that's just a couple of these little colored stones that i've got here because i won't waste this i will do something with it there we are we got a few in that and because resin sticks really well to resin brilliant bond what i'm going to do is dome this one up afterwards using the higher viscosity but i want to see if this smells at all well well, I can smell slightly something from it, but absolutely, it is much lower odour than the other items. Although, I will always still wear a mask when I use it, but what it's not going to do is make my room smell. But it's queuing up lovely. Well, there we go. That one's all nicely cured, so we can take that out of there. And then what I'm going to use is the high viscosity one then afterwards to be able to cure it. And because it's got a nice high viscosity, it should just sit around the little opening that's in the mould to put the jump ring through. Again, we just need to go around that a little bit slowly all the way around. And then I fill in the middle. And also, you don't have to wait then all 24 hours for your epoxy resin to cure if you're doming things. Burst any bubbles and then cure it up. And there we go. We've got a beautiful dome on that now going all the way around. And that's finished that off beautifully. And it's nice and firm. And this is what I use to make these beautiful rings with. And if you want to learn how to make these, then check that video out. So there we go. We've got four different UV resins, all made by Jdiction, that are absolutely amazing, awesome resins that do different things, that can give you brilliant results, that can all be used to make jewellery with, but each resin can give you a different effect. If you're looking for a classic UV resin and you're not worried about making things too domed, then I would go for either the new formula or the classic, but if you're looking to dome things and use a thicker resin, then the high viscosity is your one, and definitely 
the low viscosity if you want to do really detailed that aren't sticky. Look, none of them are sticky. No fingerprints left in them at all. And you want it on hand as well to be able to cover things up if you've got scratches or anything like that or a dull mould. Hope you found this really useful, this whistle stop tour of UV resin. I've got loads of videos on UV resin, on how to use it and different projects you can use it for. So be sure to check those out. Please boot the like button, really helps my videos to get out there. And thank you to everyone that got me a coffee last month. I can't tell you how much I appreciate them and they really do keep me going and allow me to keep buying these products and to show you the differences in these products. So thank you. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Take care. Enjoy your resin. Bye.